Welcome to our video lesson today. Now, we are in the first week of the fourth quarter. This lesson will be the first topic for the fourth grading. The objectives of our video lesson are Identify the parts of the digestive system Describe the function of each part of the digestive system Explain ingestion, absorption, assimilation, and excretion. Before we start the discussion, I want you to internalize with this saying from Virginia Woolf. One cannot think well, love well, sleep well if one has not dined well. So what do you think is the thought of this saying. Well, if you are thinking of eating, then you are right. It simply means that if you don't eat, you will not be productive because you will be feeling hungry all day. Now, what happens when you eat? That's a reasonable question and certainly one that is gone through the mind of a child more than once. What happens the moment you taste cookies, cakes, milk tea, or your favorite coffee at Starbucks? From the fact that we have more than 10,000 taste buds in our tongue, tasting is just the beginning of the process. Before we talk about what really happens in the food that we eat, let us first take a look of the different parts of the digestive system. The main functions of the digestive system are digesting food, absorbing nutrients, and eliminating waste. The digestive system has different parts that work together to perform its functions. These are the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. These parts are found along the gastrointestinal tract or the GI tract. The first part is the mouth. The mouth is the first part of the digestive system that serves as the entrance of food. Inside the mouth, teeth mechanically break down food into small pieces. Tongue mixes food with saliva that contains amylase, which helps break down starch. Next part is the esophagus. The esophagus is a 20-centimeter tube that moves food from the throat to the stomach using muscle movement called peristalsis. Next is the stomach. Stomach is a J-shaped muscular bag that stores the food you eat, breaks it down into tiny pieces. It mixes food with digestive juices that contain enzymes to break down proteins and lipids. It also contains acid called hydrochloric acid that kills the bacteria from the food we eat. Then we have the small intestine. Small intestine is approximately 7 meters long. It contains the finger-like projections called villi that absorbs the nutrients from the food you eat. The villi are covered in microvilli, which further increases surface area for absorption. Next part is the large intestine. The large intestine is about 1.5 meters long that accepts what small intestine don't absorb. Materials not digested passes into the large intestine. Water and minerals are absorbed from the large intestine 
and the remaining matter is excreted as feces. The large intestine is also called the colon. Next is the rectum. Rectum is the end part of the large intestine that serves as short-term storage of feces before it is expelled. And those are the parts that can be found in the gastrointestinal tract. The digestive system also contains accessory organs that help in the digestion of food. These organs are attached in the digestive tract and secrete chemical substances that help in the digestion process. The first accessory organ is the liver. Liver directly affects digestion by producing bile that helps in the digestion of fats. It also filters the toxic and waste like alcohol and drugs. Next is the gallbladder. The gallbladder stores bile from the liver and releases it into the small intestine. Pancreas The pancreas produces digestive enzymes to digest fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. It regulates blood sugar by producing insulin. And those are the accessory organs of the digestive system. So let us have a short generalization of the different parts of the digestive system. So for the gastrointestinal tract, we have mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and rectum. And for the accessory organs, we have liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. And those are the different parts of the digestive system. Now, let's have a short exercise about the parts of the digestive system. All you have to do is to identify the part of the digestive system. Each part is color-coordinated. The colors are dark green, red, yellow, purple, brown, sky blue, light green, and pink. So what do you think is the name of the part in the color dark green? If you think that is the gallbladder, you are correct. How about the red part? Yes, the answer is stomach. The yellow part is the pancreas. The purple part is the, right, it is the liver. How about the brown part? Correct, it is the large intestine. How about the part that is in color sky blue? Great, that is the rectum. How about the light green part? Right, that is the esophagus. And the pink part, that is the small intestine. I hope you got the perfect score for this exercise. Now, let's discuss the process of digesting food. What is digestion? Digestion is the process of breaking down food by mechanical and enzymatic action in the alimentary canal into substances that can be used by the body. There are two types of digestion. The first one is the mechanical digestion. It is the physical digestion of food that involves chewing, tearing, grinding, mashing, and mixing of food. It takes place in the mouth with the aid of the teeth, tongue, and salivary glands. 
The second type is a chemical digestion. It involves enzymatic reactions to improve digestion of carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. It takes place in the stomach. Digestion has four phases. And these are ingestion, digestion, absorption, and elimination. Let's discuss these four phases one by one. What is ingestion? Digestion starts when food is taken into the mouth. This is called ingestion. As you chew, you are breaking the food into small pieces as a means of mechanical breakdown. The pieces mix with saliva before you swallow. Saliva is a watery liquid made by the salivary glands. Saliva softens and wets the food in the mouth and also initially starts chemical digestion through the enzymes present in it. Then, the food passes through the esophagus. Muscle contractions in the esophagus help move the food down to the stomach. This process is called peristalsis. Digestion Stomach juices are chemicals made by the body that help digest food. The stomach is made up of muscles that churn and help mix the food and break it into even smaller pieces. Absorption Digested molecules of food are absorbed through the small intestine. The walls of the small intestine contain many folds that are lined up with tiny finger-like protrusions called villi. These villi are in turn covered with even smaller protrusions called microvilli. These structures increase the surface area through which nutrients are absorbed. During absorption, these nutrients pass through the walls of the intestine and into the bloodstream where they get transported to the different parts of the body. Elimination The undigested parts of food or those that were not absorbed by the body are eliminated as feces. This process is called elimination or defecation. For you to visualize the process, I have a short video that shows the process of digesting food. And all you have to do is to watch, enjoy, and learn. Digestive System Digestion is the process by which the body breaks down food into simple substances. Digestive system is the organ system responsible for digestion. An adult human has 32 teeth, 16 in each jaw. The tongue helps us distinguish different kinds of taste. It also helps to move the food around in the mouth. When chewing food, saliva mixes with the food to aid in the digestion of carbohydrates. Food is swallowed into the esophagus from where it passes on to the stomach. The food is churned and a part of it is digested in the stomach. Glands like the liver, gallbladder and the pancreas pour digestive juices that mix with the food and break it down to simple substances that can be absorbed. As the food passes through the small intestine, the digested food gets absorbed by the villi lining its internal wall. Undigested matter and extra water moves on to the large intestine. In the large intestine, water is absorbed from the undigested matter converting it into an almost solid form that is excreted by a process called defecation.
have you enjoyed the video? I hope it helps you to have a better understanding about the digestion process. Now, let's have a short exercise. All you have to do is to identify what phase is being described in the given statement. So, are you ready? Okay, so let's have the first one. Stomach juices are chemicals made by the body that help digest food. So what phase of digestion is being described in this statement? If your answer is digestion, then you are correct. Next, the undigested parts of food or those that were not absorbed by the body are eliminated as phases. What phase of digestion is described in this statement? Correct, that is elimination. Next, mechanical breakdown of food begins in the mouth. What phase of digestion is being described? Correct, that is ingestion. And the last one, digested molecules of food are absorbed through the small intestine. What phase of digestion is described? Great, that is absorption. And that's the end of our video lesson. I hope you learned something today. See you on our next video lessons. Thank you and always keep safe. Bye!